Michael, can you give us the official weather report for the center of Canada this time of year? This is Auto Collabs. Uh, yes, I can. As a matter of fact, I was talking to my old pappy. <laughs> <laughs> And he told me they broke a record. Now, they're not quite where our guest today is located. They're one province to the west, still in the prairies, still very cold. Broke a, a record for the coldest place on earth, sitting at minus 57 no. degrees. No. Stop. Wait. Minus 57 degrees, guys. There's, like a combustion engine doesn't even start in that temperature. You Forget know what's EV crazy? batteries. You want to know what's crazy to me about what this? People still there? ask me, so what made you want to move to Texas? <laughs> 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 you just sent him a screenshot of the of the weather, the weather app. No, it's 57. Oh, my gosh. Today's guest is Erin Richmond, and she's from Saskatchewan. Did I say that right? Yeah. And that's right in the middle, correct? It's kind of in the middle, right? It's central, central. What? Okay, okay. Yep. And it's cold there, but that doesn't matter when you're in digital marketing. Nope. Right? She's with S Media. And we're hoping to, to like get her to like open the playbook a little bit to tell us all the digital marketing <sighs> secrets. And uh, I don't know, we'll ask her some, we'll, we'll, we'll tee up some uh, tricky questions for her, I'm sure. We hope you enjoy this interview with Aaron Richmond. <laughs> All right, we're hanging out with Aaron Richmond. Aaron, thanks for joining us on Auto Collabs today. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So here's the thing. I know you from like a distance and we've been on some calls together, but I don't know you. But I know that you started, you were in automotive, not just on the industry partner side to begin, but also on the dealer side. Is that correct? Yeah, I've kind of uh, sat on both sides of the table. So take us back. Why? Where did automotive come into the picture for you uh, as a marketer? Okay, well, um, I started my career at Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Um, but even before that, my uh, my dad ran a body shop in a dealership growing up. And so I have many memories of a small child just like running around the parts, you know. Okay, the then I'm going to ask you, what is one yeah, of the here best? Here it comes. I'm you know out of the coming. podcast now. Paul's got a body <laughs> shop person. Oh, boy. <laughs> When you walk into a body shop or smell Bondo. Oh, that's that's nostalgia. Like that is my childhood. Best it's, smell of the world, right? Detailing yeah. chemicals and Bondo. Yeah. Hugging my dad <laughs> when I when he came home from work. 100%. Oh, right. That's right. Dad smelled like Bondo. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Kyle always jokes about that. Whenever it's like reconditioning, oh. Fig, oh. you know, like body shop, because I have a background in that. And those are just, you can't escape it the second you are anywhere near a body shop or detailing chemicals, you automatically go, I just feel good. <laughs> my, my wife got the same glass cleaner just oh, like a yeah. few weeks ago. Do you are, you, you just smelled it. You were like, oh, it's in my nose already, yeah. right? The blue she stuff. got it at the house and she was like cleaning off the windows. And I was like, I don't think we can do this. I don't think yeah. I can do it. <laughs> too much, like, too I'm much. basically in the detail department at this point. <laughs> okay, so you have like rich, uh, automotive history yeah, uh, um, deep in your blood yeah, um, uh but so take us on the track so you uh, you started at enterprise rent a car and how did that yeah. uh, kind of turn into where you are today? you know that's dealership adjacent um and then went over to auto trader from enterprise it was uh, okay. it was a learning experience it was hugely valuable and it created a lot of long lasting relationships for me in the industry um, so started with them when they were making their transition from print to digital up here in canada do you know I'm going to interrupt you right there. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a man named Eddie Blumenfeld? I don't think so, actually. Does that ring a bell? No. Because he he actually went to Auto Trader CA. He used to work for Chip Perry and Auto Trader in the U.S. And then he got recruited to go work for John Francis, who was Trader Media Corp. And transition. Okay. I thought this was about to get really connected. <laughs> but okay. So transition from print to digital, you're yeah. an auto trader. Yeah. I was, I mean, I was a pretty young buck at that point. So um, that's what I got started in digital marketing. And obviously, you know, tried to help dealerships understand that whole transition from, from like, Hey, I'm buying a, a full page ad in a magazine to um, why do you need a website and how do you understand what, he, what is even going on there um, and how do you measure that? So that really kicked it off. Um, when I left Auto Trader, I went to a local agency and uh, took some of my clients with me as, uh, as an agency and consultant. Um, and then through that, the, one of the dealerships that I've been working with since you know the beginning asked me if I would come in house. So went to help them and their sister store, um, helped them for a couple of years. And then being in 
Saskatchewan, which is a very small place. In the hold on, hold on. Don't right. keep dip, dip, dip. <laughs> okay. A little chilly this time of year too. Well, that's, that's yeah, for sure. warm today. <laughs> um, <laughs> ironic. We're going to NADA this week, and it's like I it's gonna be cold there, and I'm mad about it. But uh in in Vegas. Cold. So, cold. Just, right. yeah, yeah, cold. Okay, <laughs> fine. Uh I've there there's a lot of people in our industry that move from like starting in the dealership world, becoming marketing team or marketing person or marketing director, and move to like the SaaS or um, you know, services side of the business. There's less, although it's actually happening more than maybe when it was when you transitioned from the like SaaS or partner world to the dealership. Yeah. What was that transition like? What, what like, because that's a different learning curve than being in the dealership and moving to the other side. I'd love to hear your perspective on people that are, because that's happening more and more. And I think more and more people are seeing that as an opportunity and an option because there's so many more channels for that type of persona to be in the dealership. So I'd love to hear that because I think there's probably some people that are going, Hey, maybe that's a thing that I could do. Yeah. Um, it was, it was a huge learning curve. Obviously, um, dealerships are complex and, you know, as much as people like to say, you know, it's a business, it's, it's very much not automotive has its own set of rules, its own set of requirements, its own way of being. Um, so there was definitely a learning curve there. Um, having, you know, kind of operated adjacent, I had an idea of what to expect, but the personalities, um, the way the departments work together, um, it was, it was a great opportunity, especially because marketing kind of, you know, it's not part of fixed ops and it's not part of sales. It kind of sits beside all of those departments and, and it has the opportunity to tie it all together, right? Like you, as a marketer in the dealership, you have the opportunity to to help fixed ops and sales build that funnel and that pipeline and work together um, and inform the customer experience in the dealership, right? What we're talking about in the digital space versus what we're talking about that's happening in the dealership need to come together and need to be tied together. Um, and so to have the opportunity to do that was like right up my alley. I was just, I'm, I'm probably talking faster because it, I, I love Excited that. Excited about it. Yes. Yeah. So Amen. Um, it was I loved it because having been on the vendor side, you know, you, you're held at an arm's length sometimes and you don't get to uh, really affect the change or the potential that you see in your dealership partners. So coming in house, you all of a sudden were at the table and you had a seat at that table and you were able to actually make things happen and help dealerships understand from the inside what marketing could do or what what the reason that they were spending all this money on. Google ads or their website or any of that, you know, those pieces and how it, how it really does impact the dealership results. I think that one of the main transitions that has happened because of this, this shift is now the marketing, um, the marketing leaders inside dealerships all of a sudden aren't just about the marketing in the traditional way we think about it, like create, making creative and getting attention on certain vehicles or certain messages. But now it goes right through the front door, what happens in the operations, what happens in the processes that people go through. And so now the marketing marketing minds are now like merging very closely with the operational minds. And that has to happen Absolutely. if it's going to be right. And it's interesting that your background came through a transitionary period, right? Obviously in the body shop world, enterprise world, very operations heavy. And then this transition from Auto Trader, where you're like, print to digital, which was this like mind blowing thing, but then to go through dealer world and now be in a place where actually marketing in the physical world, like the digital and the physical world are coming together again. Um, after this kind of roundabout way is, um, I'm just verbalizing like how I see that you're like, this is why you're talking faster when you're talking about this, because you get to wake up every day now and still be a part of this, this melding of the two worlds. Yeah, um, it's it's honestly like nothing gets me more excited uh, to like help a dealership pull that all together um, and be able to do it at the scale that we're doing it um, here at S Media. Um, you know, at the individual dealership level, yeah, I can impact change, but when I get to work with hundreds of dealerships across the U.S. and Canada, um, I get to see you know what's working, what's not working, and really provide um, consultation and advice and best practices and figure out you know each market and and how to help them in the best possible way. It's, it's so much fun. So what are you seeing flex right now? Then what is, what are some of the moves that you're seeing of the, 
the best dealerships because we're in a like really interesting time f- when we're talking about like marketing or customer acquisition or customer retention where we've just been through this like anything goes they'll come in anyway yeah. and i'm i'm getting a ton of questions just personally like via text yeah where would you go? What would you do here? How would you adjust that? Like everybody is keyed up for, we have to adjust, we have to change. Um, is it change or is it stay the course or what's, what are you seeing work right now? I mean, I think, you know, given what we've gone through in the auto industry for the last almost four years now, I, I think change is just a given, right? You have to continue to adapt to whatever's being thrown at you. There's no, there's no normal here for us right now. Um, but what I'm seeing is like, what's working is dealerships who are consistent in focusing again on that customer experience. I like, I don't want to sound one note, but that at the end of the day is what drives your results. So how are you in the dealership and in your digital marketing, informing the customer experience, educating your customers, giving them what they need to make that purchase decision. As long as you're doing that and your sales team is doing that and you have a process across all departments to make that happen, you're going to be successful. And, and, you know, we've got, we're, we're facing a lot of situations and I'm sure Kyle, you're seeing this as well, where, you know, dealerships are uncertain because inventory is starting to pile up and that's making them nervous because that hasn't been the case. Um, But I would go back to focus on best practice process and customer. And that's not, that's never going to let you down. What are most people getting tripped up right now? Like if you were to say the one or two things that keep coming up where you're like, all right, I saw that one coming. What are um, well, we're seeing we're seeing a lot of people pulling back on on advertising spend because things are slowing down and sitting. What types of ad spend? Um, digital specifically. You know, we need to cut budgets because we're just not moving inventory. Well, OK, that's that's understandable. Budgets are tight, but the longer you sit on that inventory, the the more expensive it's going to be on your floor plan. Um, and you're going to impact that shopping journey in 35, 45, 60 days. You still need that, that, that traffic coming in those, those eyes on your inventory. And, and you need to be building your brand and making sure that you're top of mind for those people when they are ready to purchase. It might be that they're holding off on interest rates or they're shopping other competitors, but that's even more reason to, uh, be putting, putting an investment into your brand and your marketing. It's tough. Cause it's a chicken egg scenario, right? Yeah. It's like, Oh, we're not selling many cars cut back on advertising. Yes. However, the way you sell cars is by advertising <laughs> them. Right. Yeah. And I think that that's a, that's a scary proposition because especially as people turn the new year and start to see these downturns in the market, increase inventory, they make gut reactionary decisions and March is a big month, but 60 day shopping journeys are a real thing. And when you're talking about digital like display or OTT or ad networks, like they inform shopping journeys, not on by now, uh, they're by just a little bit later, yeah. uh, because the shopping journey, even though like the lead journey to sale is, is three to seven days, the shopping journey to sale is 60 to 90 days. Um, just saw the, uh, you know, that people are still spending 13 plus hours shopping for a car, um, in combined hours. So I, I am interested to see like, how is March for the auto industry when everybody, or at least a lot of the players have cut back in, in ad spend? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just a statement. There's not really. <laughs> let me like, let me ask. Drill down on the on the ad cuts a little bit, or at least the ad strategy, because um, obviously a lot of ads, VIN specific, trying to to move vehicles that have been slow to move, or you know we need to get out of. But you also mentioned brand advertising, and obviously a longer tail on your brand advertising. But there's been a ton of conversations now that everybody has inventory. Why should someone buy it from you? What, what's your perspective on like what a good ad mix is and how much dealers should be talking about brand? How much should they, you know, of an allocation, allocating toward brand, allocating toward VIN specific? How do you approach that? So, I mean, the good thing about brand is that you can build it um, at a pretty cost effective, with a pretty cost effective budget, right? You don't need to spend thousands of dollars pushing a YouTube video or campaign or, or you know, display ads. You can, uh, you can use a combination of organic and paid to build your brand. And you should, um, there should be, you know, uh, customer experience, um, dealership personalities, et cetera, going into your brand. And that should all be, or not all, but that should be, that should be organically posted and shared as well. Um, with, 
um, with the paid side of things, I always encourage dealerships to put some thought into, to your point, Paul, like what makes it, what makes it different to shop at your dealership? Why, what's the customer experience and why should someone consider you? Especially as we're starting to look at like, at these situations where people have inventory again. So, you know, they're, they can go down the road a year ago, they couldn't, but now they can. So how are you making sure a, that what you're talking about in terms of your brand online, again, matches that customer experience when they come in the store, because if they get a whiff of like, this is not, this is not meeting up, they can just leave and go somewhere else. Um, but how do you, that's a brutal one. That's like when you're marketing one thing and it doesn't match in the, in the, like that'll just destroy it's worse. trust. It's, it's worse. Way worse. It's awful. Yeah. But there's so many opportunities for dealerships to build their brand um, online and for them to interact with the customer before they even get into the store, right? And so like, you know, keeping t- on top of your reviews, posting organically, and then yeah, put a little bit of budget towards that messaging, um, whether that's in a video or whether that's in a display campaign, talk about why you're awesome. Like you, it, you own the business, you're running the show why 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 do you kick ass sorry like what it's fine what are you what do you what's making you stand apart from everyone else and do you should be bragging about yourself in those situations that's the reason that they're going to come to you so put you know it depends on the market i'm always hesitant to like give a budget prescription sure of course what a reasonable amount a percentage small. wise give us a percentage what do you think yeah like maybe 15 20 percent i would say of your budget yep. towards your brand right just put it out there brag about yourself what makes you great? If it's your team, if it's the experience, you know, talk about it, get it out. And do you think, do you see like a significant difference when people invest in better creative? Like, do you see that playing out way different on the ad side? You don't have to spend a ton on creative. I don't think like we're, we're in a world where, you know, where TikTok is consuming all of people's time and the more, uh, the more real and legit your, uh, your appearance is on channels like that, uh, the better it's going to be. Right. Right. The more polished it looks, the more people are like, I'm being sold to. Yeah. We're in a, we're in a place where you can, you can present yourself with a limited polish and still, uh, and still be successful. So take advantage of that. Yeah. Clever. We, we say sometimes clever is the new creative. Yeah, absolutely. So, Especially on TikTok. Especially on TikTok. Clever is the new creative. Yeah. Oh, so why good. hadn't you told me that? Paul? I just been sitting on that one. Just been. I, I have a LinkedIn that. post that needs to go out now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aaron, what's the best way for people to stay connected with you? Um, LinkedIn is fantastic. Yeah, uh, I'm not on there as much as you guys. I I don't have the uh, the daily <laughs> insights going, but um... it's part of our job <laughs> to be on LinkedIn. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely one of the best ways. All right. Well, Aaron Richmond, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. We look forward to spending some more time with you soon. Uh, thanks for joining us on Auto Collapse. Thanks. See you guys in Vegas. Okay. I didn't know the conversation was going to go into body shops. Um, <laughs> you, Kyle called it. The second someone brings up body shops, he's like, okay, we need to pause this conversation so Paul and this guest can talk about I'll the just, smell of Bondo and detailing chemicals <laughs> and how it's the best thing ever. If I could like put it in a cologne, I would. <laughs> really? That, just that smell of grease? No, oh. it's not grease. No, no, it's Bondo. It's a totally different smell. Oh, we need to educate you, Michael. Oh. Do we though? <laughs> but do we? But when you just, understand the industry from that perspective, like you've gone all the way changes. to the front, everything all changes. Front. And, and here's the thing, like, we, the three of us, we love brand marketing. We know that it pencils. We know that it works. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I've ever talked to someone in paid media that's been like, nah, shouldn't spend any money on brand. No, that doesn't work. You know, um, I think there's variables on like how much people put toward that type of marketing. Um, you know, what your intention is, what your goal is, what the inputs and outputs that you might have toward your marketing. Um, but it's clear that, that idea that creative and content and pushing brand out in every single channel is just anybody's game right now. And all you have to do is start is the way to go. Like just get something out there that talks about who you are because it will pour fuel on fire of every other ad channel. That That's like one of the biggest. Yeah. Ah, oh man. Now, now I'm, Oh, Got him. Hold the pull string. I got you. Well, 
see, because this is the thing, right? Like I was just talking to my pal. I don't know if you guys have met Rand Fishkin or not. He used to own a company called Miles. I thought you were going to ask if we met your pappy. I thought it was my oh, old pappy. We've I thought already, that was coming. He's got okay, Rand enough. Fishkin got my it. My pappy's got go. enough airtime. Maz, yep. yes. Him Maz, and I were just right? having a conversation yeah. kind of along the lines of this, which is like, here's why marketing attribution is dead. And, and he listed all of these reasons why it's so inaccurate and why we shouldn't hang our hat on it. And then he started talking about things like this, like brand. Why, why don't people invest a little bit more into their brand? And he's like, because it's harder to, it's sometimes harder to measure. It's harder to mm. track. And you said, Kyle, Usually. like, we know how it pencils because we've been doing it for so long. More but, than a quarter. Yes. <laughs> but that is, therein lies the biggest challenge that I think dealerships face in a 2024 world and beyond is what don't people know that you do? everybody knows you sell Whoa. cars. Everybody knows you sell cars. Everybody knows you service cars. But what don't they know? That's a great what? flip because usually it's like, what do other people know that I don't? You're yeah. like, actually, what doesn't everyone else know that I actually do? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's a superpower. That, like, someone write that down and press stop on this podcast because there's no, there, that you should be asking that of every communication channel that you have. That's a great question. But, but really? the hard, the hard, I think the challenge. That? Nathan, put that on repeat. <laughs> All right. Put it on Clip repeat. post, social picture of Michael looking into the distance with a knowing glance. What, what the, do you know that other people don't? But, you know, it ties into fixed ops. It ties into, it ties into every facet of the dealership, right? Like I think, okay, but do they, even if they know what you do, do they then know the process of what you do and how you do it? And you know, like there's just so much why opportunity that's important to them. Yes, exactly. Those, those long tail yep. questions. Yep. Great hey, conversation. It's a conversation on brand. We get excited about it. Yeah, we do. Hope you enjoyed it with Aaron Richmond on behalf of myself, Michael Cirillo and Paul J. Daly. Have a good day. Thanks for joining us on Auto Clubs. Welcome to Auto Collapse. <laughs> Why are we recording? Are we rolling yet? <laughs>